we say to America is be true to what you said on paper. Somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly. Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech. Somewhere I read of the freedom of press. Somewhere I read that the greatness of America is the right to protest far right. Hey there, everyone. As you all know, I'm Leandra Banks. And I'm Zay Marshall. Welcome back to another episode. And today we're going to be talking to you all about leadership. Leadership, why it's important, what leadership means. We're going to take you through some footage of the significance of leadership. There's many different aspects to being a leader. Um, of course, you have to remain positive and keep a positive attitude. Definitely. Um, not being a follower, doing your own thing, walking to the beat of your own drum. Being a leader is many different things. Yes, we're gonna explain why it's important, why you guys should lead, not follow. Being a leader is important because it changes our history. It's what shapes our history. Um, for one, it's what you know leads our society and changes society around us. So that's why it's so important to be a leader. You have to lead and not follow because if you be a leader, you're moving forward. If you're a follower, you're moving backwards. And we don't want to be stuck left behind. So we got to move forward and we got to be strong and lead the path amongst ourselves and amongst our friends and our peers, everyone around us. Yes. So please take a close and personal look at today's segment. Um, we feel like it will be very beneficial, not only to the youth, but everyone. Um, everyone needs to be a leader and take the necessary steps in becoming a leader. So we certainly hope you enjoy today's segment. So take it away. <laughs> now, so the last time I was here, we our last day was going to be the end of May. Mm -hmm. So we found out that our last day is going to be the end of June. So when I was here, are you listening? Yeah, I'll we'll we wait. What, what, what you got going on all over there that's interesting? I actually can I use a headset. What you get out of this that you just read? Excuse me. Hello. I was reading while with you. I don't know. What did you come up? What did you come up with? Excuse me. I was talking about federal taxes and income. So what, what, what are federal taxes? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think, this is my opinion. Y'all tell me what y'all think. I think when somebody talks to them, we should always give them their full, your full attention. That's what I think. And then that way we show them respect back and forth. We agree. We agree. Especially when a lady talks. Some of you may know this is from last week. I wasn't here last week, but it broke my heart what I saw. So we're going to watch you. If some of y'all say that y'all want to see how y'all look on film, we're going to show this. Did anybody see they self up there that they want to talk about? Hey, I was what you said? It was disrespectful because Ms. Harris kept telling us to be quiet. Tell me why everybody was talking while we supposed to been talking about each individual goal. All we want to really do is teach our youth about financial literacy. We really want to better our futures. It's a mess right now. And we don't want to repeat the same cycle that's going on in Earth continuing today. Everybody's in job court for a reason. You know what I'm saying? So, no, I don't know you all struggles, and no, you don't know mine, but just know that I feel y'all. I'm um, just realizing it's a time and place for everything. You know, and just remembering why you're there and what you need to do to be successful. I think everybody should be just accountable for their actions and Ooh. just be respectful for each other. Mm. It was about being a leader, 
It was about my growth as a young adult, and it was about standing before you all to say, I'm making something out of myself. We as a youth and now young adults, we need to listen up and take control of our futures. As now I am in a position where I am mentoring youth and I am leading local communities, I had to wake up and learn from my mistakes to avoid my new mistakes. As graduates, we need to know where we are going when we walk across this stage. And we also need to know how we're going to get there. Remember, always stay positive, never give up, love your family, and give back to your community. I thank you all, and remember, the sky isn't the limit once you're close to the moon. When I was younger, I had like a I don't care attitude, you know, which, you know, probably didn't put me in the best situation, you know, early on. But it came to a point where I realized I needed to change not only for, you know, the people around me, but for my future. Because at the end of the day, it's like, all you got is yourself. I had to change for myself. I, in elementary school and in middle school, I was like, you know, that class clown, like troublemaker, <laughs> you know, things like that. But in high school, I just like turned my life around and like isolated from the in crowd, as you want to say, like, I guess the in crowd, they do certain things that I didn't want to involve myself within, like, you know, do drugs and fights and things like that. Um, I just stayed away from it and I just followed my own path and within my path I just always wanted a successful future. Keep your eye on that target, on your goal, whatever it may be, you'll get there. And it's like the best appreciation at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You need to believe in yourself but you also have to work at what you want to do. You should be a leader and <laughs> And set your own examples. And I'm gonna be myself and be my own leader and never be a follower and make the right decisions. The future is very important and it's never too early to start preparing. Being a leader is when you invest in yourself. If you push yourself a little, you can achieve just about anything. I think everybody should get a round of applause. My name is Daniel Williams. I'm the senior blogger and founder of the DNA Reviews. I review movies and books, PG-13 and down. I don't review horror and love books. Being a young entrepreneur is great. For those who don't know what an entrepreneur is, it's somebody who owns their own business. Being a young entrepreneur has extra advantage to that because people just want to help you. I got started summer last year when my mom introduced me to a book called I Hate Knuckle Sandwiches, Nico and Sierra's Adventure, which is a book about bullying. I, my mom told me to review it, so I did review it, and it was a sense of realization that I had a gift of writing and words. And then when we went to business camp, I, well, uh, they they introduced me to a site called WordPress.com, which is a blogging site, and it took me off reviewing movies and books. Anybody my age, which is 13, knows they have a lot to deal with, including uh, work and teachers and growth spurts. And well, being an entrepreneur helps with each one of those when it comes to work. Your sense of time and managing comes into play, which is basically with almost all of those. When you, with the pressure of going into high school, um, when you, I feel like that now that I'm an entrepreneur and I take on so much as that. It's uh, kind of hard to, it's kind of silly to look back and be like, oh, I'm scared of going to high school. That's, that's kind of funny just to think about how I used to be scared of going to high school. I'm, I'm the, the president of Men Amy Hire, which is a nonprofit based out of Prince George's County, Maryland. Mm -hmm. We primarily mentor young boys between the ages of 16 to 29, teaching them how to become a man how to sit up straight, look someone in the eyes when you're talking to them. Instead of saying, yeah, uh huh, you can say yes, no. The importance about pulling your pants up. And if they really knew why their pants were hanging down, they wouldn't want them hanging down anyway. A large part of our teaching derives out of the book of Proverbs, where it teaches you knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. 
for me, that's the blueprint on how to become a man. <clears throat> a lot of our, our young boys or, or young men do not have a sense of direction. Mm -hmm. You know, so a large part of our teaching is uh, knowing in which where you came from to know where you're going. Right. You know, so we, we try to hone in on old skills of, of, of proper planning, setting your goals, making sure that you at least have five goals that you list, you know, from high school to college, if not to college, to make sure that you're job ready. Right. You know, as I travel around the county and, and, and been a part of uh, uh, call-ins with the police department, and as we talk to young boys coming out of the jail and the detention and coming home, the first thing that they say is, look, we're tired of being the stick-up kid. We don't want it no more, mm -hmm. but we need employment. We need a job. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, what can we do or what can you guys offer? So those are some of the things that we try to do to try to make it easier for them that are trying to do the right thing and right. get back on the right yeah. track. The resources of volunteers and people becoming members is not uh, one of our, 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 our where our hands are tied. Mm -hmm. Our hands are tied where it comes into raising money, okay. you know, to do all the wonderful things that we do, the job fair, the health fair, the, the health walk, the Father's Day cookout, all of these wonderful things, there's always a dollar attached to it. Mm -hmm. So my con concern or, or problem or struggle is, where's that dollar coming from? Goals for Men Amy Higher are, are pretty clear. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> is to grow our membership base, okay. uh, to help as many people as we possibly can, uh, and two is to uh, create chapters of Men Amy Higher throughout the United States. So for us, it's about uplifting people, men and women, boys mm -hmm. and girls, expanding our reach that way we can cover more areas. When I was a little bit older than you, I had a mentor. And uh, he told me, he said, Daryl, at some point, you have to think about leaving a legacy for your children. And it took me until I got older and having children coming home when my, my kids would grab me on the leg and say, Daddy's home, that I got it. And for me, that was the time to say, let me try to help someone else's child in order to help my own child. young people, including myself at one point in time, you blame your parents for your lifestyle, or you blame society for your lifestyle. You blame because this happened back in the day, because it was slavery back in the day, I can't get a job today. Right. Which isn't the case. We have a black president, so that, that, that shows you, because we had slaves you know, 500 years ago, that things, things are still the same, but they have changed some. So what I tell the young people, don't make so many excuses so fast. And it sounds so cliche, but it's real. So many people Make the excuse of the past. Don't let your past dictate your future. Right. Don't let your parents' past dictate your future. We have to start holding ourselves accountable and not blaming society. Right. Not blaming, oh, my, my parents went in my life. Both my parents passed by the time I was 18. So like that, that is an excuse that, you know what, this is the reason why I'm going back because my dad wasn't in the household. Right. Now, yes, fathers, we have to start being more men to our kids. And, and that's one thing that I really preach to my brothers and, and to my families that we have to stop, especially if you are able to be in your child's life, stop not taking advantage of them. Yeah. And, and like you said, you know, so with that being said, you know, we have to start holding ourselves accountable and brothers and, and sisters as well have to really start being more involved. You have to hold yourself accountable for your own actions. Right. And, and, and that's what I tell young people, just stay focused, stay focused on your dreams, stay focused on your goals. are twofold. Uh, the first, as a young person, mm -hmm. uh, I'm only 19 years old and one of the first things that I received in the mail when I turned 18 was a credit card. I received multiple credit cards and not every student, especially in our community, uh, know what to do when they receive credit cards in the mail. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, financial literacy wasn't taught when uh, my parents were in school, so it's important that, especially in our communities of high poverty, our communities uh, where parents might not be too sure mm -hmm. about the rules of financial literacy, that we that, that we uh, instill that in our students. Right. Uh, because not every student is getting it from home. Uh, and ultimately, uh, well oftentimes, students when they get the credit cards, they go 
uh, they spend uh, money, that, money that they don't have, uh, they get in debt, uh, they can't afford to pay for college, uh, and it's really a cycle. Uh, and it really goes back to that cycle of poverty that I often speak about. Um, and the only way to really defeat that cycle of poverty is through education. Mm -hmm. And education with financial literacy, education just in general. Um, and that's why financial literacy is so important. As a member of the Prince George's County Board of Education, it is extremely rare that I find uh, an organization, a nonprofit, that is as dedicated, uh, as motivated uh, as the Katie Abel Foundation. Their willingness to sacrifice uh, for the good of the district, the good of students, is absolutely remarkable. Uh, and I've enjoyed working with all of them uh, to really improve the quality of education in Prince George's County. Not just the quality of education, but the quality of lives of our students because at the end of the day, financial literacy goes beyond the classroom. It's practical advice that every student needs. So I definitely appreciate their work and I wish them continued success in all of their endeavors. existing technology and improving it. Uh, mm -hmm. Now you're a lighting system and this is considered the roadway lighting systems, uh, parking lots. They are actually monitored by a sensor, photo control. Mm -hmm. Sun goes down, the light comes on, the sun comes up, the light goes off. Mm -hmm. The lights were going out, actually burning out and not being repaired. Right. So I saw that as an issue of uh, that problem as well as I was developing a platform for communications. Mm -hmm. Um, so with those two together became an invention of a light control system. Right. I needed to get as much, I guess, support and control over my next business venture. Mm -hmm. And the first one was just come up with an idea, patent the idea, manufacture the product, and now as well as install the product. Right. So, you know, starting recently in business, um, 1994 actually wow. from this venture. Mm -hmm. And that's when it was started. Uh, we had to pay for employees and engineers and design uh, attorneys. What advice can you give to our youth who have to pick up the pieces or who are struggling from the um, effects of Wall Street or the recession that occurred back in 2008? You have to be focused on what are you trying to do, accomplish. Right. And no job should be below you. Look at something, and not for it for today, but how you can take it to the future. Well, a lot of our youth seem less motivated nowadays, so could you tell us what motivated you or what what made you want to become a, an inventor? But a key thing um, that I got from my granddad, which needs to really get to the youth, youth of the day, and as in all people, because it's never been said, what he said was, you take this seed, you plant the seed, you water the seed, you weed the seed, the seed produces a potato take the potato to the market and sell the seed, then you can accomplish getting a pair of shoes. Right. So if you want to spend that time in that season, mm -hmm. you can't just shop because, oh, it's pretty or it's a party. Right. You have to go to your season. Right. When you work hard, it's invisible right. of your success. Um, the other two uh projects that we're working on and you may want to give a little advice is we uh, well Leandra wants to start a nonprofit and I was telling her that I think it's a good idea if she start the paperwork now because it's going to take her four to five years to get it off the ground right so what type of nonprofit that you want to start well it would be geared towards helping young girls um, that have been incarcerated and coming from incarceration juveniles through like I would say like probably like 21. I still want to help 
the young girls because there's a lot of them that just go into like juvenile homes and like are truant and running away right. and all that stuff so that's what it's going to be geared towards young girls mm -hmm. being incarcerated and coming from incarceration okay and then it's going to have some type of rehabilitation piece in there as well yeah i know that's um, going to be like a lot but that would be my next thing would to be have like a um like a property or something like a transitional home mm -hmm. so i kind of am familiar with um mm -hmm. like the way they're ran and and stuff like that so I know it's gonna be a long process but I hope to have you know the office side of it the organization right. and then what you said tra the transitional home for them to go mm -hmm. rehabilitate and um, you know live right. for a couple months and get back on their feet oh yeah yeah that's a that's a good thing and then at the same time by coming from the Katie Abel Foundation you could teach them the financial literacy right. piece in there also as mm -hmm. well because part of getting back on their feet is uh, definitely going to be financial right and then it's going to have some educational component in there somewhere as well there now there's there's lots of transitional homes there's uh -huh. but there's you'll see a lot more for the men right. than you will for the women I'm sure there are organizations that help young incarcerated females and uh -huh. things like that but um well you have to see who your competition is right so you have uh -huh. to start researching, researching. Uh -huh. and then you have to make yours unique mm. Right. Different than theirs. Right. I mean, you can, you know, tailor it like how they are doing it based on the state's requirements and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But you always want a unique component with it. Right. Yeah. The main part is just getting the uh, getting it all written out. Right. Making sure it meets all the Internal Revenue Service codes. Mm -hmm. And then once we get it laid out, then we got to deal with the state compliance after that. Right. So it'll be it's, it's pretty easy once you get it passed through. Mm -hmm. um, the only difficult part of it is sometimes conveying your idea on paper so other people can realize what you're talking about. But anyway, yeah, it sounds like a great idea. It'll probably take you about six or seven months to get through the Internal Revenue Service. Mm -hmm. Well, and, remember it took us what 14 uh, months though 14 months yeah maybe because it was the financial literacy piece yeah because the financial literacy piece but um transitional living and things of that nature uh, tend to already be scoped so they already have a vast amount of information about it mm -hmm. the when we did the piece that we were doing was not even heard of mm -hmm. uh, as far as being on that level as far as financial literacy is concerned of um, all the components that we had involved in there. So. And then of course they will need psychological therapy, which right. she'll have her degree, and then they would need the financial literacy piece. Right. Those are the two most important pieces. Uh, Mr. Zane here, since you're sitting here with the CPA, mm -hmm. maybe you can tell him what some of your obstacles are. You have an LLC? I actually have a soul. Um, this is a sole proprietorship. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you want to convert it to an LLC mm -hmm. or you want to leave it as a sole proprietorship? Mm -hmm. Before you convert, um, are you going to be doing something nationwide or are you going to be doing it just in the Maryland area? I would hope eventually I'll get to nationwide, but just starting off, I'll probably do it just in Maryland. You just want to do Maryland. The LLC only has limited liability protection in the state in which you apply for it in. Mm -hmm which is the Limited Liability Corporation of Maryland, mm -hmm. as opposed to being an Inc. where you have all over the United States because mm -hmm. you're incorporated. But if you're going to solely stay in Maryland, mm -hmm. period, then you should have the Limited Liability Corporation in Maryland. But since you guys are going to be traveling across the United States, then I think you should think about incorporating the business. Now, there's another one in there that's the S Corporation. Mm -hmm the LLC, if you take the S election under the LLC, you know, you get to keep your retained earnings. And that's the smartest one to do. It's um, tax-free because you get to take their earnings and put them back into the company so you won't be charged taxes on them. So that's good when you first start now. Mm -hmm. So you may want to look at that also. All right. how to own their future is through building success. Good and success? Through building success. Oh, building success, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. And I do that through educational motivation and tooling. Um, I'm also working on a book called Becoming Zane Van Gogh, which is like my alter ego in a way. It's like, he's my successor. <laughs> he's like my role model. 
a role model I never had. So pretty much it's um, an inspirational piece about where I was before it to where I am today. I think you're on the right move. I think the fact that you can also be a motivated speaker. I think you can go around and speak to the youth. See, a lot of people will look at the, the polished person, but they don't see your struggle. Right. They don't know what you went through. So it's very important that youth that work with the Katie Abel Foundation obtain their own dreams. That's why I've instructed Leandra to start a nonprofit and have focused on Zane and creating his book and preparing journals and things of that nature. So one of the things that we offer at the Katie Abel Foundation is not just employment, but the fact that they have to create uh, being leaders and entrepreneurs and business owners and things of that nature. And it's very important that they also give back to the community. What do you guys want to do as you get older to get back to the community? Although you work in your foundation for nonprofit, how is that going to help the community grow? Because working with the youth, you're helping them become mature. You're helping them mature, so you're you're bringing them from one level to another. So you're helping them become you, young. You should write to the governor and the lieutenant governor <coughs> about transitional home for inmates and let them know what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And the fact that uh, it, transitional homes are key in the state of Maryland. It's so much money that you can go get grants from the government, purchase a home, renovate it, make sure it's up the code, and bring inmates in there to live, and the government pay you for your home to bring inmates in there, transition them back from prison back to society, mm -hmm. and with your skills will be tremendous. And with you, I think that you should be reaching out to Will Jolly and other obviously, motivated speakers, that people that's your age, that's more motivated speaking. Les Brown, I took a Les, Les Brown class. There's so many young motivated speakers that help you empower yourself and you're stronger. I think both of y'all are doing a great job. You're doing work, so I applaud you. Thank guys. you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. That means a lot. These are things that you're already being taught. Yes, man. I apologize. Hands off. And they, they sit in front of, you know, a successful person every day, all day. Yeah, that's you. Okay, I'm ready to have y'all want to get started. <laughs> we already got started. <laughs> you please introduce yourself. Herma Dawson, original from Selma, Alabama. So, would you say um, the crime rate has been an increase since the crashing of Wall Street? In Prince George's County, maybe through throughout the state of Maryland, we've had a decrease. There has been uh, fewer cases filed with the Department of Juvenile Services. Non-violent first-time offenders, their cases may not ever get to court. We also have in our juvenile drug court a GED program such that any kid who's not in school, uh, we're working with them to get their GED. Now, based on your experience and, and, and the young folks that you've seen as you were growing up, what do you think they need? They need leadership. They need someone to look up to. They need to understand, like, they need to love themselves for who they are, and they need to make their own decisions. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's episode, and before we leave, we must leave you with the financial tip of the day. And that is to always take a lead on your finances. When you are taking a lead on your finances, you are definitely taking a lead on your future. And that is to always save, that is always to invest, as well as to budget your money. And when you are budgeting your money, try to save like 30% of your income. Absolutely. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and Twitter at Katie Abel. Until next time, I'm Zay Marshall. And I'm Leandra Banks. 